All right then, so what we're going to have a look at now is we're going to have a look at how to do this sort of section of the beetle. Um, but because we've already done that side on our test piece, on our little practice sheet, where we were learning the skills, I'm actually going to look at this side for you to create alongside me um, with, on the beetle in this video. And then I'm going to let you do the other side on your own, purely repeating what I've done there. And I might even replay that video from that demonstration if you need help doing that side as well. OK, so you will remember what we started off doing is we started off with yellow colour pencil and we're going to do exactly the same this time. So it's sort of down here at the bottom. And around along that edge as well. So I've gone in quite hard at the bottom, but then I'm going lightly now with my pressure. Um, and I'm going, I'm actually going to stop and leave a little white gap there. And then I'm going to push extremely lightly over here. Now, hopefully you've done a better job of rubbing out your guidelines than me. Because I'm looking now and seeing and thinking, oh no, that's going to be a problem. Because my guidelines are going to show through. If I quickly just rub those out. Let's be there. Not perfect, but better. So... I'm going to continue going up here quite lightly with my yellow colour pencil. I'm just going to go all the way up to the top. And then where I see sort of stronger bits of yellow, I'm going to go in and push a bit harder with my pencil. Because I do want the yellow bits to stand out, but I don't want to do too much of the hard colour yellow in the middle. Um, because then it will be too difficult to sort of blend the colour pencils of the other colours over the top. Okay, so down this side of the beetle, I can see a very white section and a little white section here. And it all sorts of blends in with this yellow. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go and get my white. And I'm just going to go and colour. And blend all of those parts in. And just get my little white sections in there so I know when I'm colouring what I'm dealing with over there. Okay. And just because I want my sections to sort of be able to blend them together and everything like that, I'm now going to go in with my lighter green before I finish off these sections. So I'm going to go and push harder down here. And then lighter as I come out towards where I meet the yellow. And that's why I've coloured that white section in as well. So I know sort of where to stop up there. And I know some of the green does sort of come out into this section. Over here. But we'll work that a bit together when we start getting the colour detail in and again down the back of the section here we do have some green and some bits that sort of blend with the yellow and then at the top here we've got a white bit there and we've got this little white section so again I'm gonna stop and leave those bits white but then colour in the green I see at the top um, and then I'm just going to go in here over the edge and just sort of overlap those colours a little bit. So again, I can get my yellow back in. And I can overlap those colours a bit to start to bring them together. All right, so now we're going to start adding in the detail of the colours that we see. So my next colour that I'm going to work with is going to be this yellow ochre. So I'm going to start here where I can see it sort of getting darker. And then a lot of the darker colour happens up here to be fair. So starting lightly and gradually as we come up. Push harder towards the top and it kind of disappears off up here. And you can see now having that green at the edge to start to help with that blending process and I'm just leaving some little bits of yellow that I see around the edge and 
just leaving them so that they can pour through. And I think this would benefit from a bit of that because it looks kind of like a creamy colour almost. There at the side. Alright, so I'm happy with that bit. And then I need to start going in with my next colour which is going to be my darker brown. Okay, so I can look at the pattern, I can see the darker brown starts to come from here. I can see we've got little sort of marker like that, and then it comes up from the other side as well. And this is where, again, a really sharp pencil is going to help you create these sort of marks that we see. Because it kind of comes across and makes a funny little yellowy section in between the browns um, but then as we're going up towards the top it's getting a little bit more solidly brown um, so I'm going to go in quite lightly first because there are a lot of different tones that happen up here And then when I can start to see now, I can start to see places where it's much darker. So again, I can push really hard now with my colour pencil and start making those really dark sections that I see. And you're just trying to make the shape of them. Now, don't worry if you can't completely get it all completely accurate to what, I, what you see like some parts are not fitting in as long as you've got some of the different tones in there it will start to look accurate and it will start to look like it makes sense Well. I'm gonna go over lightly for those bit because it just kind of make it a very brownie. You can see lots of tones of red and orange in there as well. So what I'm gonna do at this stage is I'm just gonna let a little bit of yellow. And I'm just going to work that back in at the edge where I can see that highlight there. And there's a little bit up here as well. A little bit in that spot there. And then just back down here at the bottom. Blend that in. Okay. Then once I've got those sections, what I'm actually going to work in with now is I'm going to work in with my red colour. Because you can see a lot of this brown looks very reddish in torn. And this is going to do a lot for helping me blend these different tones of these colours together up here. So you can see that just sort of brings that all together and kind of makes it look a little bit more like what we're seeing on here. So I'm going to go over this section as well because you can kind of see those orangey marks down there. And then again, just get the yellow at the bottom of that to blend that back together. Okay, so before I start going in with my black on there to darken some tones up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to make my different colour tones that I can see on here and then I can start using um, black to sort of build things up together. So we've got this dark section down here which is very black I know but I'm not going to go in straight in with the black I'm going to go in with my darker green first because we know building it up in layers makes it look more realistic working all the way along there with that darker green keeping that white 
edge. And then once I've got that, that's when I'm now going to go in with my black. Okay, so we can see down here, this part is black. So I'm going to colour that in. Darker at that bottom edge and then I'm coming out lighter as I come across because this kind of looks fuzzy and shaded and blended so I want to be able to blend with it so I don't want to push too hard so I'm just sort of building it up in layers as we've done a lot of times within the other sections of this beetle and it comes right along here to at the top and gets even lighter where it starts reaching out to meet that section there And then that's where we start to come in to this other section of the beetle here with the brown. And it's going to work a lot for us for blending in as well this because then we're going to start going into these little darker sections where we've made the brown darker sections. So we're just going to shade over lightly with a bit of the black just to give some of those a little bit of a darker tone and just to bring those different horns together and then what we can do at this point is we can get our green and we can go along and we can blend that edge together there and then we can get the darker green as well and we can go along and blend in with that black there and then we start to get something looking a bit more like that beetle's back and it's all starting to nicely smudge and smooth and blend together so now i'm going to do the same thing with this section of green that goes around its back um so down here we can start to see there's some of that very strong green color but like i said then you've got like a white highlight section so being careful not to colour over that and then we've got a very dark green bit that comes around the back there and curves up around that corner and then just joins in with this very dark shading up here in the corner so again just blend that in and then I'm gonna get my white to finish that little section up in there off and I'm gonna sort of pull that all together pushing in to blend into those colours that are already there. Give it that little bit of a highlight in that section. And then I'm left to deal with this section down the bottom here. So we've got the black that overlays with what we've already done there. And that black line sort of goes up past that white section that we've drawn. So I'm just going to meet it up with that section there. And then we've got this bit at the bottom. So I'm just going to leave that lighter green there. And I'm going to sort of shade over and shade around it. Because that's what looks like happens on the little thing here. And then I'm going to... Sorry, my picture's gone down and realised I'm looking at it and I'm not keeping it in line with the video. So you can't see what I'm talking about, but it's a little white section here. And I'm going to work that in there as well. And then sort of bring that all up. Use my black. To sort of bring it all together. And to blend it all in. Because then we have like this little grey, blacky section along the bottom here anyway. And it kind of comes together to make all this like sort of grainy texture that we can see down here at the bottom of the beetle and then there's like a little greyish blackish rim that runs along the edge of the beetle and joins it all back in with that top part there okay so to finish off that top section, I am just going to get a bit of my white pencil again. 
just because it picks up on some of the colours and it just makes it look like it is all sort of joining and merging rather than having a left out white section on my page. It just picks up on some of the colours and pulls it together and just makes it look a little bit more realistic in my mind. And then over at this edge here, I can sort of see like a little hint of brown where these areas join. So I'm just going to go and shade that in to help me join that on as well. And again, I could just get my white and just go over that and pull that together a little bit more there as well. Okay, but once we've done that, I would say that I'm getting pretty happy with that edge now. Um, I might, if I wanted to, go back on top and go back over some of these darker areas, trying to push a bit harder with my red to see if I can intensify those colours a little bit. Again, if you think any areas you haven't made them dark enough or light enough, you can go back over with your white and your black to sort of get those areas to blend in together. Okay, but I think that's a long enough demonstration for now. You can do that side and you can go along and have a look at this side and then we're going to come back for one last video where we look at all the legs and um, all of the antenna in the head and everything. And we're going to get those bits finished off once you've got your beetles back done.